Brocky Pelma Vogans, known throughout the hobby as the Mexican Red Rump Tarantula, has also been imported and sold under the common names Central American, Guatemalan, Honduran, and Mexican Black Velvet Tarantula. This species is a New World terrestrial opportunistic burrow that comes from the Yucatan Peninsula, but also it has been observed in Belize, El Salvador, Guatemala, and northeastern Costa Rica. Most recently, the Mexican red rump has been discovered in a citrus grove outside Fort Pierce, Florida. It is assumed that this species was introduced into the area, either intentionally or accidentally, by a gravid female escaping or being released into the area and laying an egg sac. It is believed this species has existed in this area since at least 1986 and has thrived as the environment in this area is similar to the Yucatan Peninsula where this tea is originally from. Though there have been attempts to eradicate this species from the area, it has so far not been successful and these teas can still be found in that small area of Florida today. This isn't the only place this species has been introduced by humans. There are also red rums found on Cozumel Island in Mexico, where scientists found that over time this species grows much larger than their mainland variety. The B. Voggins has become a very common tarantula in the hobby due to its beautiful black velvet color and red sete on the abdomen. They are easy to keep and breed and are normally very inexpensive and given away as freebies when people purchase tarantulas from breeders. Due to the common nature of this tarantula, their beauty has become familiar and overlooked. And the species has been turned into an ongoing meme due to the fact that people misidentify other more rare tarantulas with the phrase, looks like my bee boggins. This tarantula grows at a medium pace with males reaching around 5 inches with very long legs and small abdomen and females reaching a leg span of 6 inches or more and being more thick and hardy. Males can live as long as 8 years and reach sexual maturity around 4 years. Females can live up to 20 to 25 years and reach sexual maturity after about 7 years. Females typically lay egg sacs with between 100 to 300 eggs, though some unconfirmed reports have stated there can be as many as 500 to 600. I keep my spiderlings in a basic acrylic spiderling enclosure filled up about two-thirds the way with substrate. I consider spiderlings in this case to be slings under two inches in leg span. I keep the substrate a little moist like with most slings and provide a hide and small water dish if possible. Once they molt and are over one and a half to two inches, I move them into an acrylic juvenile terrestrial enclosure. I fill these enclosures over halfway with substrate, provide a water dish and hide and keep the substrate dry but overflow the water dish every three weeks or so and let the substrate dry out completely before overflowing again. Once the species reaches about three and a half to four inches, I move them into a two and a half gallon aquarium or Exoterra nano-wide enclosure. And as adults, which is usually around four and a half to five inches, when the tea is reaching sexual maturity, I move them into their final adult enclosure, which is usually a five gallon aquarium or Exoterra small wide enclosure that measures 12 by 12 by 12. It is important to make sure there is plenty of substrate so the tarantula cannot climb the sides and across the top and fall a distance that could cause a fatal injury. A good rule of thumb is to leave no more than one and a half times the leg span of the tarantula between the substrate and the top of the enclosure. As far as feeding, I give my slings under a half an inch flightless fruit flies. Once they're over a half an inch, I give them small crickets or roaches about twice a week and pre-kill crickets for the smallest slings. I wait about three to four days after a molt before attempting to feed the sling again, ensuring it has had time to harden up. Once they are over two inches, I switch them to medium-sized crickets or roaches and make sure the feeders are no more than two-thirds the size of the tarantula. I feed them about every five to seven days and remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours. When the tea approaches pre-molt, I cut back on the frequency of feeding and wait about seven to ten days after a molt before attempting to feed them again.
I feed my adult Vaughans five to seven large crickets every seven to ten days and switch it up sometimes with mealworms, roaches, or other invertebrate feeders like locusts, waxworms, or green hornworms. This species is an excellent eater at any size and is always fun to watch pounce on their prey. The B. Vaughans is docile most of the time but can be defensive when disturbed and is quick to kick hairs as they attempt to get away. Their urticating hairs are not as irritating as other species but can still cause discomfort and can be very damaging if they were to get into your eyes, mouth, or nose. So keep your tarantula away from your face. My red rumps do not like to be bothered and will even attack the water dish when I refill it. This can be avoided by dropping in a cricket to distract them right before filling up their water dish. Though they are docile, they have a strong feeding response when they detect movement in their enclosure, so I do not try to handle this tea. Normally they are very slow moving but can move very fast in short bursts and mine are prone to mood swings. Most of the time this tarantula is laid back and chilled, but at other times they can be easily agitated and mine have even thrown a threat pose a time or two. They are a great display tarantula though, and spend most of their time as adults sitting out in the open. With a deep black velvety body and deep red hairs, they are truly beautiful. Because their husbandry is very easy and straightforward, and the fact they are readily available and inexpensive, I think this species makes for a great beginner tarantula as long as you don't try to handle it. Now the B. Vaughans was one of the most requested species that people suggested in the comments of previous videos. So thank you to everyone that made that suggestion. And if you have a suggestion for another species you would like to see me cover in future episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, be sure to leave that comment down below and help me decide which species we do next. I feel like this species doesn't get enough credit because it's become so normalized in the hobby, but they truly are a gorgeous tarantula with an amazing feeding response and mine are almost always out on display and beautiful to look at. For the people that aren't saturated into the tarantula hobby, this species always stands out as a beautiful specimen to them. I love how intensely mine will attack their prey, and it's always on the list of tarantulas I am sure to show off whenever someone new comes down to take a look. They're so easy to take care of and so beautiful, and there's a lot of interesting facts about it. In fact, there's some indigenous people from the area they are originally from in the Yucatan Peninsula that use them medicinally. The shaman or medicine man of the tribe will actually capture the tarantula, kill it, crush it up, soak it in alcohol, strain it through a cloth to remove all the urticating hairs. Then they use this beverage as a treatment for an illness they call tarantula wind, whose symptoms are things like chest pain, coughing, and asthma. Now, one of the peptides in the venom of this species is actually being studied for possible treatment for cardiac arrhythmia and muscular dystrophy. Now, if you enjoy scientific facts about tarantulas and spiders, be sure to check out my friend Lewis's blog. It's called Placlarum Theraphosidae, which I believe means remarkable tarantulas. There's a lot of very interesting articles and scientific studies on his website, and he and I are gonna be collaborating in the future to come out with some scientific Saturday videos, where we'll cover some of the science and new discoveries and research that's going on related to tarantulas and spiders. So if you're looking for species-specific care and husbandry and all things related to the tarantula hobby, be sure to join the collective by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you get alerted anytime I post any videos. And if you want to support this channel, feel free to share these videos with your friends and Facebook groups. Help me get the word out about the channel. If you want to stay connected with me between videos, join me on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, or Patreon. And of course you can join my Facebook group where all the members get 10% off their purchases from Fear Not Tarantulas. And for all things Tarantula Collective related, from announcements, videos, pictures, or even merchandise, check out my website, thetarantulacollective.com. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. I appreciate all of the likes and kind comments you all have been leaving. Thank you all for being so awesome. I will see you next Tuesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, coming in, coming in yeah. In. Flex, I just wanna win, just yeah. Win. LA BB, who we running with, yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on ten again, yeah. State your name, Bibbing dope on flame. I just switched the lanes.
Damn, he did it again. I just flipped the pain. Stripping and dipping in bass, slab on everything. Swimming, you shaking away, cause I got big racks coming. I put my low racks on it. I ain't skip past losses, I had to get back off it. See the fit lab on it until they whip my coffin. Money clip, I tossed it, I heard it's big bags on big bags on big bags coming. Uh uh, coming in. Yeah, flex. I just wanna win. Yeah, LABB, who we running with? Yeah, 2233, I'm on 10 again. Pump up the action. I'm active. If he never heard of Ben Dope, he just napping. Jackson's off the rapping. Keep it on my body, bitch. I'm broke if you ask 